Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature as it's remaining very unsettled over the next few days. We do have yellow rain warnings issued in the south and the east simply because of the amount of rain that has fallen recently. The actual individual rain events coming up over the next couple of days are going to be heavy but not anything ridiculous. It's because the ground is so saturated that we could see some flooding issues. So we'll have a look at the warnings for that. It is towards this weekend it is turning colder though. We are going to be seeing temperatures drop down into the mid to high single digits in the day overnight getting towards freezing and I wouldn't be su surprised to be seeing major snowfalls over the higher ground of Scotland. Not too unusual for this time of year but it's been so mild recently that it could come a little bit of a shock to the system. We'll then have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS, GEM, ECMWF and the ensembles as the Scandinavian high that we have been alluding to for the past few days continues to give us headaches. This is potentially turning us cold towards the end of November or at least putting a spar in the works. Um, every single run we're seeing now that Scandinavian high is taking more of an influence and that is sometimes what can happen with these blocks. They do get under modelled. They are... Um, their sort of persistence where they do sit does get uh, badly modelled. And what we're starting to see is, is this guy's even high taking more of an influence at the day 10 period. Um, and it could mean colder and maybe some snow for northern areas at the moment. That's from what we're looking at the latest models. Cold air could be pushing in from the east, low pressure undercutting it from the west. We could see some very cold, unsettled conditions, some very sort of marginal snow events are possible within the next few weeks. So we'll have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now today we've had a big rain band move through, big air of low pressure, and you can see a huge weather front that is now clearing, as I'm recording this around 4pm, now clearing parts of northern and eastern areas. Still lingering across Scotland and the far north of east of England, but it's clearing most areas. But behind it, the actual centre of the low, with a bit of an occluded front wrapped around it, brings some heavy squally rain now into central southern England and that will spread eastwards with a lot of heavier showers pushing in behind it. This is the sort of the theme over the next few days, especially in the south and the east in this southeastern corner. You could be seeing a lot of rain falling on already saturated ground so there could be some problems with that and of course the temperatures are cooling down. Now we're calling this around 4pm and if I do put on the temperatures, you can see in the far east where we do still hanging on to that milder air, temperatures still getting into the low teens today, but further westwards more blues influencing us, so much cooler down sort of the low teens, maybe high single digits, and we're more widely going to be seeing these sort of high single digits as we head into the weekend, even though it still is a generally a westerly flow. Cold air masses digging in, the jet stream getting pushed southwards by the Scandinavian high, which isn't pulling in any ridiculously cold air from the east for the time being, but it's pushing the jet stream southwards, so we're on the colder side of the jet, meaning we're generally average to below average in terms of surface temperatures. Upper air temperatures, we're sort of oscillating around average, but towards the surface, because of the wind and the rain, it is going to feel really quite chilly. If you do go to the UKV and have a look at those precipitation and temperature charts over the next five days, you can see the heavy rain spreading through at the moment. We see the occluded front spreading through in the south overnight tonight, giving a lot of heavy rain in the south and the west initially, but turning more southwards and eastwards over the course of the night into Wednesday. Those showers continue through tomorrow, especially in the south and east, before dying at around lunchtime for another big weather front pushes in through Wednesday afternoon into the evening, giving more widespread heavy rain through Wednesday evening, especially for England, Wales, uh, there, for eventually spreading out into the North Sea with a lot of showers wrapped around it. You can see, though, that low pressure kind of stalls, and that's because of the sky's even highs influence, keeping it sort of stalling over the UK while it does fizzle out. As we head into Friday, see a lot of that heavy rain is across parts of Scotland, and then eventually, as we head into Saturday, we do see another weather front approach from the west, and watch it as this comes in. Real quite heavy rain and accompanied by cold air. So look what happens over Scotland. Could see some major snowfall over the higher grounds of Scotland as it does move in. Again, this will be 
a few hundred meters at least above sea level so really only the highest routes but it's something we haven't seen so far this autumn quite unusually we haven't seen it so far this autumn we're a good few weeks late on these sort of northern hills uh, snowfall events which uh, we generally do see from around november all the way to sort of april time so yeah unusual that it's waited until the 20th of november but this weekend with these weather fronts bumping into colder air it's likely that we do see uh, some snow over the higher ground now, elsewhere, it's going to be cold. If we put in the upper air temperatures, you can see at the moment, we're around sort of mid-single digits for upper air temperatures. But later this week, colder upper air temperatures will move in. Initially, only really around freezing at 850 HPA. But as we go progressively later into the week, into the weekend, we see cold air trying to push in from the east. You can see that as the Scandinavian high trying to pull in colder air. Nothing ridiculous, but colder than average and you can see a colder air mass moves in with the lower pressure system and this all combined together gives low dew points especially over the higher ground and that's where we could see snowfalls and frosts you can see that better by having a look at the dew points look at that getting towards freezing in some areas and if we put on the two meter temperatures you can see today struggling around eight to ten degrees in the west but 13 14 in the east but watch these temperatures plummet over the next few days it's wednesday overnight temperatures really only around the mid to high single digits and it's wednesday afternoon you see those temperatures maybe 9 10 or 11 and as we head into thursday overnight temperatures once again mid to high single digits maybe touching on frost across parts of the part of Ireland and northern ireland with clearer skies and the cold air mass pushing in and by thursday afternoon high single digits maybe 10 11 degrees into friday overnight temperatures once again mid single digits Friday temperatures only 8 to 11 degrees. Again, doesn't sound particularly cold, but it's a good few degrees colder than what we've had recently. And into Saturday, overnight temperatures. Look at that, widely touching low single digits, if not getting towards freezing. So perhaps our first widespread frost risk there. Look at that, real widespread across the whole of Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Scotland, three Wales and England, down towards freezing or one degree. And into Saturday, those temperatures really not rising much above six to eight degrees maybe the isolated nine so turning much much cooler and into sunday yes cloud and rain moving in but where we avoid that again getting towards freezing so real step change coming up in terms of going from sort of milder conditions generally still chilly but milder conditions towards proper late autumnal colder conditions getting towards sort of winter average sort of conditions where we're seeing frosts quite regularly overnight and uh, or at least temperatures getting close towards freezing regularly overnight and temperatures in the day struggling in the mid to high single digits now if you go, if you go to the weather warnings you can see we've got the yellow rain warning in force still across parts of scotland uh, and that expires at 9 p.m this evening and heavy rain may lead to some disruption again we looked at this yesterday but 20 to 40 millimeters likely maybe 50 to 60 millimeters over the higher ground of aberdeenshire angus and perth and king king ross high likelihood lower end of the impact matrix but we now have a rain warning in the southeast. Uh, again, we've seen this rain warning quite a lot over the last sort of week or so, but it's because the ground is so saturated here. You can see again, heavy rain and showers bringing a chance of some flooding and disruption from 5 p.m. tomorrow until 6 a.m. on Thursday. Again, look at the further details. 15 to 25 millimetres is likely to fall widely, with 30 to 40 millimetres over in a few places, and strong gusty winds, 40 to 50 miles per hour. And I said, again, as I said, with the ground already saturated, this may lead to some flooding. Again, high likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. Again, this individual event would not normally warrant a yellow warning, but it's because the ground is so saturated that uh, only 15 to 25 millimetres can give some disruption. So, if we now go into the longer range, have a look at the GFS, GM, ESIM, WF, and the ensembles over the next few weeks, we'll see what this Scandinavian high is potentially going to be doing to our weather. Now, you can see at the moment that Scandinavian high is building in, low pressure running up against it, but the low pressure is generally dominating. However, as we head into this weekend, you see the Scandinavian high starts to build in more, and that's why on Saturday, Sunday, we could see that snowfall over high ground of Scotland, because we've got the Scandinavian high trying to push in cold air from the east, lower pressure trying to push in from the west. You can see that a brief little milder sector there, cold air to our east, milder air in the centre, and cold air to our west as well. Uh, now, if we do move beyond that, we can generally see that cold air to our east trying to nudge in from the Scandinavian high. Nothing ridiculous, but cold uh, that could produce some wintriness. And you can see westerly winds trying to push in up against it. And in the longer term, we do see milder air masses pushing for a time. But watch what happens with this. We go to the pressure charts. 
the Scandinavian high breaks down for a, a brief time, but right towards the end of the month, look at this huge Scandinavian high system building in. And what we'd see with that, if we ran that on another few days, cold air wrapping around it. You can see it sort of elongating there all the way from Siberia. Again, it can't be that cold because it is only the start of the winter, but that would be turning us imminently very cold. Look at the Northern Hemisphere view. Look at that extremely cold air is getting dragged out of Siberia. Again, go to the European view and put on the potential equivalent temperatures. You'll be able to see this even better. But look at that. Look at all that cold air towards Eastern Europe getting dragged our way. So even though it doesn't, even if it doesn't go bitterly cold, we don't see the minus 10 or minus 15 ice firm push through. Even if we only saw the minus 5 line push through, it would turn us cold and would bring a risk of wintry conditions. So the Scandinavian high really is holding on. I keep seeing people saying nah, it's, it's just going to be temporary. It's going to not produce much. But it's remained in our model output for the last uh, five days or so and is still on the GFS output all the way to 384 hours. This Scandinavian high is here to stay for a, for a good period of time and most likely will pull off easterly winds for a time. Whether they're very cold easterly winds or just chilly easterly winds, we can't say anything for certain. But every single day this Scandinavian high remains in the model output increases the chance that we do see something cold, whether it's just colder than average, as I said, or very cold and well below average. We'll just have to see over the next few weeks. Now, if you go to the GM, see how that doesn't compare, what that does with the Scandinavian high. Again, low pressure running up against the cold air to our east over the course of this weekend. Could produce some snow over the high ground of Scotland. Again, though, look at the lows diving to our south. And actually, a very cold air mass gets pushed out of Scandinavia towards Scotland. Doesn't quite make its way in. But look at that. Look how far south the jet stream is. It's into parts of Portugal and Spain. We're on the well on the cold side of the jet this it would generally actually go a little bit milder with a lower pressure running in off the atlantic but it is quite a cold block sort of pattern that could uh, could produce something more substantial in the longer term and you can see how that cold air does get shoved out of scandinavia uh, around uh, in sort of seven days time you can see that cold air out of scandinavia potentially mixing into scotland with the lower pressure and again could be seeing some interesting conditions with that but again it's this Scandinavian high the blocking to our north still there uh, and it could produce something interesting towards the second half of the month into the end of November and start of December all eyes now need to be on Scandinavia as this is recurring in all our model output if you go to the ECMWF, see how that does compare to day 10, with what that does with the Scandinavian high. Again, you can see the low pressure running in, cold air trying to get out of Scandinavia, trying to push towards us. And again, doesn't produce anything ridiculously cold, but blocking to our north and low pressure is pushed well to our south. So yeah, this wouldn't go ridiculously cold, but it would bring the risk of snow for Scotland and generally colder than average conditions. For all of us and if we did follow this in the longer term look to the northern hemisphere view look how blocked it is on the atlantic side loads of amplification in the jet stream these low pressures getting shoved well southwards again opening the door to interesting conditions to end november and start december again it still hints today we're not seeing anything concrete you see all three models showing something slightly different um but that scandinavian high blocking pattern is continue to occur so as I said, we'll have to see what happens. Now, after you finish by having the ensembles, you can see generally we are average over the next couple of weeks. But as I said, with a lot of rain around, a lot of wind around, a lot of cloud around, it's probably just going to feel colder than average in general. You can see towards the weekend, just slightly below average by maybe two or three degrees. And we're seeing cold conditions, five, six, seven degree highs and frosts. So that's all we really need this time of year to get to sort of colder conditions. So um, even we do see a little bump of cold or air pushing, it, it will give us drastically colder conditions. So we'll have to see what happens with that over the next few weeks. You see the operational GFS goes very mild at the end, but that's because that high pressure is building in. It's pumping warm air up towards Svalbard and Scandinavia. So that would, if you followed that on another few days, would probably go a lot colder with easterly winds. Um, so that's sometimes why these charts are a little bit misleading, as they can show very mild conditions, 
before they imminently go very cold. Um, but generally, we're around average, very unsettled. So regardless of what happens with the scabs here in high weather, we do ever pull in very cold air. It's going to keep us chilly. It's going to keep us unsettled. And yeah, not particularly pleasant. And this sort of scenario is sort of kind of, kind of kept in the middle. It's not particularly mild with this unsettled spell. Um, but then, it's not, uh, but then uh, uh, to the contrast, it's not particularly cold and settled either. You know, we're kind of in the middle. We're cold and unsettled. Kind of like the worst combination. Because sometimes you can get unsettled conditions and it's very mild. So uh, you don't have to wrap up as much. Uh, and then at other times it's very cold. You have to wrap up quite a lot. But then it's at least it's dry. Uh, we're kind of in the middle here. Um, so yeah, unsettled and cool over the next few weeks. Again, you can see this well emphasized around the dew points. Again, all around that sort of three to five degree marks with cold dew points. Nothing ridiculous, of course, for snow you need below freezing. Um, but it is cold, showing colder air masses. Again, look at the two meter temperatures. Again, looking likely that highs over the next few weeks are going to struggle to get above sort of nine or ten, maybe 11 degrees, and lows generally on around the mid single digits. And then, of course, when we get some clearer skies, we'll drop lower than that. So we'll have to see what happens over the next few weeks. It's looking really quite interesting. Uh, a lot of stuff to come, and it is a very unusual start to winter. We don't normally see these sort of recurring scans and even blocks appearing. Um, so definitely something is going on in the atmosphere that we have alluded to in our winter look heads for the past month or two. So it is nice to see that that is verifying, at least to a certain extent. Whether we go cold and blocked and snowy, we can't say for certain until it gets into within sort of five to seven day time frame. But... Were the long range models right in forecasting blocking to our north in early winter? They've been right so far because that is what is happening. Uh, but we'll just have to see if anything happens with it in regards to the UK. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.